started my academic career actually uh, back as an undergraduate. Uh, my senior year, playing football, a uh, game against Colorado and Boulder, having the game of my life. The coach apparently went at halftime and said, if this bum is gaining all these yards on you, you're going to be in a lot of trouble when you play Nebraska next week when they were in power. Uh, I came out in the second half, started running, hit me so hard, knocked me over the bench, broke my ribs. I sat up and said, I can't breathe. This hurts like, oh, get out. And guess what? I'm taking the GREs next week. That was it. So I became a, an academic as a result of my uh, pain and suffering on the football field. I'm a political scientist by training. Actually, it's been, and I've studied elections. I've written on elections. I've written on city politics. I've worked on three presidential campaigns. Uh, so I'm quite interested in what's going on today. Um, I was political commentator on one of the local TV stations in Los Angeles for several years. So um, I have an eye on what's going on. One of the great benefits of having spent so much time at a school like UCLA and before that University of Wisconsin was I had got an up close and personal look at what the quest for excellence really looks like. For our campus, I think as we're aspirational in nature, I think it's allowed me to start to identify a vision that asks people to raise their sight lines, to raise their eyes up as to what's possible. And um, I've had the advantage of seeing it from the inside. I worked for the chancellor, I was a dean, I was a professor. I directed and started two centers. I mean, I sort of have you know, started as a young assistant professor and worked my way up. So I have an idea about how this works after now 33 odd years or something in the business. And I think that experience allows me to bring a focus to what we need to do here. My greatest fear about being chancellor was that I would be stuck in my office and there would be a long line of supplicants coming in, either asking me for something or complaining to me. That's what was like my cold sweat in the middle of the night fear. So I said, well, I'll fix this. I said, give me a golf cart. Give me a, because I saw some of you, the facilities guys driving around these kind of cool electric carts, you know. The students dubbed it the warrior whip. I would just leave the office and go get in it and just go up to students and say, you want to ride? I take them all over the place, wherever they want to go, library, their dorm, the cafeteria. One of my favorite ones, one of the students says, well, how much does it cost? And we're like, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. Just get in, so on, where are you from, what year are you, what's your major? And then at the end of the ride, I'd say, okay, you got 60 seconds with the chancellor, shoot. What do you got to tell me? What do I need to know? What questions do you have? And they'd talk and chit chat. And so it was a way for me to, two things. One, I got out and got to meet the student body. And two, I just could hide from my staff and they couldn't find me. And President Spellings was one such road trip. Paul Chalimo, the silver medalist from the Olympics, he and I took one and it was on Veterans Day, I think. And he's a military guy and all these veterans were on campus. And so it was really cool because he got to talk to all these veterans and we stopped and he had his silver medal on. That was a lot of fun. And we've taken all, all kinds of people and drive them around and it also lets people see the campus. This place is terrific. They undersell. And that's why every time somebody encounters us, they go, gee, this is so much better than I expected. And we have to now to get them to expect the unexpected.